What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files. Ask Nick edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Allie and Amanda. Ladies, how are you doing? I feel like we have good energy today. I feel very yeah. thankful Great. to be here. I expect this every day. Well, then it won't be special. <laughs> See, when you said that, I thought you were kind of commenting on Nick's energy. <laughs> no. And so then I found no. that response very funny. <laughs> I'm not coming for Nick. Do, Do I you? not always have good energy? I, I think sometimes you have other commitments that are taxing towards your energy. That was a perfect way of putting it. Uh, preoccupied. <laughs> totally. As, I, as we all I don't are. always have good energy. Do you feel like... I don't... E no one does. Yeah, well, some what, people. Are, what percent of the time do you think you have good energy? How do you describe good energy? Low. I'm, I'm I'm often not upbeat. <laughs> same, 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 my, same. My resting state is like a neutral. I I operate on a very neutral plane. Flat line. Yeah, <laughs> which is great for me. I think I don't know. I think it makes under, other people uncomfortable. Anyway, what's going on? What's new? Did you ever go on that date with uh? Comedian boy? Yes. Funny man? I was just not feeling it. Okay. And so I was like, I am going to give it one more shot because this has been a lot of texting and I know we can insert our own emotions into text and I didn't want to do that. We set up a date. He canceled a couple hours before because he said he wasn't feeling well. But then he said, oh, let's do a Zoom date. Okay. And the Zoom date, I was just not, I was just, it was, it, it was the extra data point I needed. Okay. Great. Yeah. I ended it the next day. He kind of asked me for an exit interview, a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, but I yeah, were this. any of them um, what would, yeah. specific? What were his questions? Well, the one that I didn't like was, will you tell me why you're ending this so I can know what you misinterpreted about me? That's absolute fuck you <laughs> like to that man in the phrasing of that question. And I, I said that. Well, I, I, fuck you. I, I mean... Not a not a fuck you, but like a fuck you. Yeah, okay. the tone makes yeah. all the difference. That definitely makes a huge yeah. difference. Yeah, it's like, sir, like <laughs> you made me get on here and give you a very awkward explanation as to why, and then you asked a question presuming it was my fault. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes, but correct. Somehow, I didn't see you for the glory that you are. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm not your mom. Yeah, I love I love everything about it. About this, you weren't sure. You said, "You know what? I'm going to go on another date." He decided to cancel, but you know, good for him. He had a Zoom date. Mm -hmm. I love that you you didn't ghost him. You you gave him the hey, this isn't working for me. He, you know, granted he he wanted to, to follow up. You gave him the courtesy of that, and now you mm -hmm. you moved on. Great, yeah, yeah. easy peasy. Responsible dating. Yeah. Uh, speaking of moving on, maybe uh, I saw my ex, and it was so which one? pleasant. Which one? I only have one like ex the, the down the street guy. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't live down the street anymore. Now he lives in K-Town with his new girlfriend, okay. and they seem very happy. She also Have you met her? <laughs> no. Well, no. I, he had one uh, concert that was, like, important. Um, so I, I went to that, mm -hmm. and I think it was when they just started dating. And so he was sort of, like, after the fact, like, gave him a quick hug, and then it seemed like it, like, it was kind of a thing where... It's like, oh, I think he wants to like be mm -hmm. in a circle with his friends. And it I was just like, I don't know. This is like not really about me. I came, got the ticket, came to the show. Adios. So I've like, I think I've seen uh, that or I've seen him put his arm around a woman <laughs> who's not his girlfriend. <laughs> but I, uh, so I, I don't like, I don't and really then like. then he put his arm around a woman. <laughs> yeah, a woman. A woman. <laughs> Musicians. Um, but I don't really like, I don't have access to her, which I think. What does that mean? Yeah, that, that sounded, mean, that sounded no, no, no. like you tried to stalk She's her. She's locked up. <laughs> I just mean like I've never seen her Instagram or like there's nothing like, I guess it's just like there's so many people who I would have been obsessive about seeing who the next person they dated like after me was. Mm -hmm. He's not one of them because there was a lot of like closure and like it's all, you know, Do in the breakup. Do you think women in general are more likely to stalk a new partner than Absolutely. men? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying men don't do it. I, I just don't remember. I remember not wanting to see that shit, you know? I just don't ever remember, like, doing a deep dive. And it's not only the one person. It's all of their friends, too. Like, all of my friends will be like, we're, we're doing it. We're doing a deep dive. Well, okay. Why? We definitely did it with Promising Young Man's New Girl. I hate I that think you call him that. Oh, it God. was I claimed to fame. It was not my it was not my phrasing. In general, going into a date, like the number of women who might Google. No, a, I'm not talking a person. about No, I'm, but I think I'm it's talking. related. Like I think if you're just like used to because I think part of that is maybe like I a don't safety buy that component. Excuse. I don't buy I do. That I think we, I think maybe I think we do the readings. That has, one has nothing to do with the other. I think there's this like there's this like 
what I think of as this like false perception that like, oh, information is power. Like the more I know, the more I'm in control of something. So I want to know everything I can to feel like I have maximal control, which is yeah. horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way it works. Anyway. Yeah. Should we talk about the Merriam-Webster's word of the year? Let's. All right. Please. They announced, in this age of misinformation, of fake news, conspiracy theories, Twitter trolls, and deep fakes, gaslighting has emerged as a word for our time. There was a 1,740% increase in searches for the term this year. 1,700% increase. 1,740% increase with interest remaining high throughout the year. The definition, the act or practice of grossly misleading someone, especially for one's own advantage. Wait, have we changed the definition? That is apparently the definition according to me. I don't think there was ever like one definition in like the pop cultural context like i think there were maybe like psychological like in therapy setting definitions but like uh, either way very it's, it's all very confusing so anyways what's their definition again the act or practice of grossly misleading someone especially for one's own advantage okay so what's the difference between that and manipulation to control or play upon by artful unfair or insidious means especially to one's own advantage so very similar so advantage. basically, we just replaced manipulation with gaslighting. Artful. Ooh. <laughs> well, gaslighting has, yeah, misleading someone, and then this is mm -hmm. to control or play upon. But yeah, it's their it's their word of the year officially because of how much interest it has caused. I feel like it's we talk about it a lot on the show. Is that all they said about it? This is an article from the Washington Post. They went into just you know the origin of it coming from the film, mm -hmm. what that film was like. All that good stuff. It's a word that has risen so quickly in the English language and especially in the last four years that it actually came as a surprise to me and to many of us, which is the Merriam-Webster editor saying that. It's a word looked up frequently every single day of the year. Yeah. I think most words are. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like most words are probably looked up every day of the year. That's not what this person meant. <laughs> It's, I'm being it, pedantic. It's, it's looked up more. Great. Now than, I have another word to look up. Thanks, words. Amanda. That's it? Did they speak to its usage and like whether people are using it correctly or they just said it's the word of the year? I feel like you're fishing. <laughs> you're digging here. What do you mean? I think from the very beginning, we've always had, we've aired towards the more like clinical definition of gaslighting. I mean, I just like, you know, we had Dr. Solomon on the show Ooh. and we talked about what it meant and we talked about the play bill that it came from and like we talked about how it's used you know, well, kind of unofficially with therapists, it's not part of the DSM, but like it's a behavior that's kind of been identified. And then again, like it's just my whole thing with the word is I'm curious, do they were in this dictionary, do they refer to it as a form of abuse? So that the definition I gave was kind of their succinct overarching definition. But their top definition for gaslighting is the psychological manipulation of a person, usually over an extended period of time, that okay. causes the victim to question the validity of their thoughts, perception of reality, or memories, and typically leads to confusion, loss of confidence and self-esteem, uncertainty of one's emotional or mental stability, and a dependency on the perpetrator. Yeah, well, that's far more thorough. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Gaslighting is a heinous tool frequently used by abusers in relationships. Yeah, that that's my thing. Again, I, I think that is a very like thorough definition. Mm -hmm. Over time would, would be a big thing. Also, like at the end of the day, you have to be able to, I suppose, prove what the truth is and then what the abuser's truth they're trying to convey or manipulate over the victim, right? No? Like, because it's a lot of times in these gaslighting discussions and arguments. It's a matter of perception. Both people have their truth on how they see a situation. And and then one person's like, you're gaslighting me because I feel crazy. I still, I, I, I love that they did this because I, I feel like maybe hopefully we're bringing more actual uh, awareness to the word because it's a meaningful word that has like has mm -hmm. its place and it has its real victims. And I just like all these things. I think when it comes to dating, I, I just don't think a lot of people are critical thinkers. I think they're lazy thinkers. And I think it's just like, oh, like we, we, we it's just easier to like take a simple a, a word that can, you know, you think captures a feeling that you're feeling and using it without actually thinking about and articulating your feelings and having a discussion about it. And it's just become easier for people to say the word love bombing and gaslighting and things like that without actually like having a conversation about 
what it is they're actually feeling and if it, if it actually is. And it just dilutes the word and it takes away from the people who are experiencing these things. You know, whatever. Anyway, like gaslighting is not just manipulation. Love bombing is not just saying I love you too fast. Mm-hmm. For those of you looking to earn host with the most status this year, Brooklinen has you covered from gifts for your guests to interior refreshes. They're the one-stop shop for stepping up any space. If you're wondering where the time went and could use a little help getting ready for this holiday season, we've got you. And by we, we mean Brooklinen. Brooklinen makes holiday hosting so easy, you may be tempted to do it again next year. They've got everything you need to outfit your guest room, grab a great gift, or treat yourself to something cozy. Nick? What are your favorite Brooklyn and products? Everything, everything. Their sheets, their duvet comforters, their comforters, their hand towels, their bath towels. They have it all. It's truly magnificent. Uh, it's it's an amazing gift for your uh, kid going to college or a friend or yourself. It's amazing. I got one for my mom this year for Christmas, and she's hyped about it. It's yeah. a nice everyday thing that someone will genuinely use, and the high quality of it will make a difference. And it's soft and cozy. On top of all the coziness on the horizon, Brooklyn is offering something extra special for first-time customers. Visit Brooklyn and com today and save fifteen percent off your first purchase plus free shipping. That's b r o o k l i n e n dot com for fifteen percent off your purchase plus free shipping. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Well, therapy is always important, and uh, with the holiday seasons approaching us, uh, that holiday blues is a true thing. Sometimes the winter blues, sometimes you know, for other people living in the cold weather climates, it's getting dark early. That can change your mood, and if you're feeling down, maybe you just want to talk to a mental health professional. Uh, BetterHelp is helping people connect with therapists like never before, and they're making it super easy and convenient. You can do it from the comfort of your home, your car. You don't have your lunch break at work when, you know, maybe you're just like exhausted from the people. You just need a mental like uh, refresher. You can do it from your home, tablet, phone, computer. Super convenient. And the best part is they will make sure that you are working with a therapist that you connect with, that you vibe with, that's right for you because they are working with thousands of therapists and mental health professionals. They're signing up new ones every day. Uh, Over 3 million people have connected with licensed therapists through BetterHelp, and they're doing it online. You can talk to them via the video. Uh, You can do it without video if you just want some privacy. It's super easy. It's super convenient. It's amazing. As the world's largest therapy session, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L-F-I-L-E-S. That's BetterHelp.com slash files. I was doing questions with Nick uh, and someone asked this question that I was intrigued by, uh, but I didn't feel like I could answer it thoroughly on a, in a couple of texts. So I said I would, we would talk about it on the show. The question was, uh, guys keep flaking on me for first dates. Can I put something in my dating profile to help? I like, thought about this question. Well, first, my, my, my question is I'm curious if, if a lot of people relate to this. Because like, at first, I thought to myself, you know, one, I don't think there's anything in putting your dating bio, mm-hmm. like as far as, and then, you know, my first thought was, well, I don't know, maybe just, maybe just it's first dates. Maybe a lot of people are flaking. It's you're meeting people online. There's a, a level of, I don't know, what do you want to, like, it's like shrinkage, you know, like on, in a store, there's just a certain level of like, hey, we just like, you know, if you run like a grocery store, you know, you, people are going to shoplift that you're not going to catch. It, I don't know. Like, oh, know, totally. There's a, there's a certain level of like, hey, there's this. Uh, plenty of bad fish in this sea, so to speak. You know, you are, you're shifting through dirt to dig for gold, so to speak. So like, you're just going to have to take the good with the bad. Like cover your bases a little more. Don't put your eggs in. Well, no, just more like if you're going to date via the dating apps, like you just have to have reasonable expectations. And those expectations are a lot of people are very non-committal. So it's not you, it's them, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Is my is always kind of my first thought when I read something like that as it relates to like someone dating on dating apps and getting discouraged by people being inconsiderate or, you know, flaking and things like that. The only note I would have for this person, and I would say this is if who's initiating the date, that'd be my first question to these people. Who's more often initiating the dates? If it's them initiating the dates and canceling, well, then I think you're just kind of SOL. I don't know if there's much you can 
you can do. I think, you know, things like FaceTime dates and Zoom dates are a great way to like avoid stuff like that in a sense. I think you just help yourself avoiding the getting ready and canceling, you know, people dating, you know, anytime people are meeting a, a stranger for a date, especially if it's an in-person date, it's like, do I want to, there's always an awkward moment from a woman's point of view. Often it's generally like their safety concerns. And do I want to meet this strange guy? If you're a guy, generally it's just like, do I want to spend money on another date? You know, usually men are still socially, you know, uh, expected to pay for first dates and things like that. That can get expensive. So there's a lot of things that people are just like, oh, do I really want to do this? And I think, you know, Zoom dates and FaceTime dates are a great way to kind of ease people into this, like getting to know each other. If you are the one scheduling a lot of these dates, if you are on these dating apps and maybe you're taking our advice saying, hey, get off the apps, just try to get a cup of coffee and you're doing that, maybe you need to slow it down and try to get to know them. And again, via Zoom or FaceTime dates in the sense that like maybe you're insisting on a date before you guys have any rapport, which is a bit, it's dating on a dating app. There's no perfect world because I don't think people just spend three or four weeks texting back and forth to build rapport so that people stop flaking on you. I'm just saying like, maybe try to get to know these people a little bit more. Maybe try to suggest like a FaceTime date or a Zoom date or things like that to maybe just before you get to like, let's get a cup of coffee or walk in the park people have more reasons to get excited about seeing you because they feel a little more comfortable and feel less like they're meeting a stranger as opposed to getting a chance to meet someone they've already spent 20 minutes, you know, chatting on Zoom or something like that. I, I, I don't know. I just think those are the little I think, nuances people can do. But it's most, it's like, I wouldn't get discouraged and there's nothing really you can do, I think, on a dating app. I think all you can do is try to build some more rapport and then go from there, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. This is maybe more of a like, if you can't beat them, join them type thing. So I'm really curious because this is my instinct. I don't necessarily stand by it as like, this is my advice. But I found like the most effective thing to do is like plan dates on the same day. Like I think there's or the day before, like so many people on dating apps are just like when I was on dating apps, oh, sometimes I would be like, like I want to go on a date tonight. Just, and then I would just swipe oh. until I found someone who like sure. seemed cool. You're more of the Oof. adventurous dater, though. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I why I realized like this instinct was maybe not applicable. I don't really so. have anything wrong with it, but yeah. Do you think it's because I'm I'm curious? The thing that I was like, huh, I don't know, like why I don't know if I would like stand by this as like a thing to tell someone is like, is it, it perpetuating bad behavior? I don't. It, it all depends. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to go. Like in your case, you're just like, I want to go on a date. If I had a note for anyone out there who's listening, saying, yeah, I'm getting flaked on a lot. Again, most I would say. It's safe to assume it's not you, it's them, and you're just dealing with flaky people who just made an excuse to like not follow through with meeting a stranger. In your case, you're like, I like, I just want to go on a date. I want to be social. I want to meet someone new. I, I just want to get to know someone, and we'll see where it goes. You have a, a far more adventurous side. I think that's great, but you know you're being adventurous, and with being adventurous, you realize there's certain risks, right? Risks of it being like, I didn't even know if I was interested in this person. I just wanted to meet someone. It could go terribly bad or terribly good. I, you know, I don't know. I just think for someone out there, it's the person who's feeling a little like maybe lonely or anxious and hasn't had a date in a while. And they're just kind of like angsty about like planning and getting a date. And so they're just swiping a little bit more aggressively and they're they're out there shooting their shots and good for them for putting themselves out there. I just think maybe they want to pull it back a little bit and either try to like a build a little bit more rapport via Zoom dates or FaceTime dates and things like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Because either way, I think you're always going to deal with people who are flaking if you're dating on dating apps. And you're never going to like reduce it down to zero. You're just trying to minimize it. You know, so I think it's just being a little bit more honest about like your state of mind. You know what I'm saying? So if you're more ambitious, either be mindful of that or just pull it back because you don't want to you don't want to just be willing to go on a date with anyone unless you're literally telling yourself, I'm kind of open to just going on a date with anyone. Does that make sense? Am I making any sense? No, you are. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, because I think it's also like, because I feel like so much of like what you talk about, especially when you say when people are kind of like, oh, it turns out they weren't the one after like, you know, three to seven dates and they've done something weird, you know, and you're like, well, now, you know, you can get excited about someone like it's made me think about how much of dating in terms of like dating with intention, dating, looking for your person and like kind of being invested in that process is about like keeping your own morale high and not getting utterly discouraged by yeah. it. And so it's kind of a question of like, what's more discouraging for you? Like 
getting flaked on or like going on less intentional dates with people where yeah. they're a little less like vetted by the behavior ahead of time. Yeah, it would be like if Allie, who's not as adventurous of a dater as you, like got, you know, maybe didn't have a, a, a good date in a while or didn't have any date in a while and felt a little like anxious about that. And instead of like telling herself, I'm going to just be more adventurous, I'm going to like do what Amanda does. She didn't like have that conversation with herself, but just kind of just started trying more and just got a little panicky and just started swiping right and started matching and then went on the apps and was like, hey, you want to grab coffee? Like within a couple messages, you know, and maybe did it with a couple people. And some guy was like, yeah, sure. And then like the day came up and it was like, hey, I'm not really feeling it. You know what I'm saying? But she never really told herself. I'm like, listen, I'm just going to kind of go for it. I'm going to play Russian roulette on this dating app, which you kind of have this conversation with yourself. You know, like I always talk about being honest with yourself. So it would be like if Allie did that without having that conversation with her about herself. And then all of a sudden these guys would be like, nah. And then it would feel like these guys are flaking on me rather than her just saying like, well, of course, I'm kind of like just shooting from the hip, you know, type of thing. <laughs> I would love for Allie and I like swap bodies nope. <laughs> for dating. No, 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 no. <laughs> I lie. would have it panic a dick. No, but I would. Okay, well, I would love to see how you would date as me. Like, I would love to date it with your style of dating and like. See what is how my it goes. style? I don't know. But I mean, like, whatever's different like for me. Mentally, I don't think she could do it or wants to. I don't have time in my day for that many anxiety attacks. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's not fun. It's me on the floor, She's a deep burn. breathing. She's a slower burn. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we have a great show for you. Uh, some great calls. Uh, don't forget to send those questions at asknickatcastme.com. Cast with a K. Don't forget, to, don't text your ex. Happy birthday. Still available. Crushing life. People are just enjoying the book uh, yesterday. Uh, let's see. Someone sent a sweet note. They they posted, went on a girl's trip this week, and this book was a hot topic. We read some of it out loud, and it hit home for all of us. And uh, yeah, anyway, if you are... Uh, Anything relationship based, if you're struggling, if you're just, it's a fun read. If you haven't gotten it yet, check it out, vilefiles.com. Anything else do we need? Yeah, very quick breakup song of the week. Breakup song of the week. So the breakup song of the week is all over again by Vincent. I, I, I also, I'm fearful that during this segment, I'm going to say bands names wrong because I feel like there's so many bands where it's like, you have to be a part of the fan base, you know, the correct pronunciation. Regardless, thank mm. you to the person who sent this in. They said it's a breakups, it's a positive breakup song, more of a celebratory mourning of the relationship, essentially saying it wasn't going to work long term, but that doesn't mean it wasn't beautiful or that you wish you'd never dated them. He says it better than me. So I think that's and they this one, they didn't include lyrics, but I really like what's the song. the song called? It's called All Over Again. By who? Vincent. And it's and it's like a really upbeat, happy breakup song. All Over Again by Vincent. Is, and, is it a band or an artist? I believe it's a singular artist. Okay. And because we are getting so many amazing, wonderful submissions, can I do one more quickly? Breakup sure. songs of the week. This next one, uh, shout out to this person for giving a full description and the lyrics. We appreciate you. Crying Over You by Chelsea Cutler slash the band Camino. And the person who submitted this said, the vocals of the song are uh, Italian emoji, you know, like the Italian, mm. oh, molto bene, uh, top notch. And the overall message of realizing something is coming to an end with someone and recognizing the problems in the relationship and accepting it's better to feel sadness and hurt of a relationship ending instead of enduring the constant pain and mistreatment in the relationship. Sounds like Victoria and Johnny. And then the lyrics this person <laughs> submitted are, you know just how to get me, how to take my love and use it against me. I keep wasting all my time trying to make the wrong things right. I hope you like your bed when it's empty because I chose... Because I choose crying over you. I choose silence over being lied to. I choose drinking alone, drowning in my tears in my bedroom because it'll make me happier than you do. I choose crying over you. All right. Well, don't forget to send in those questions by the book. Let's get to our callers. Also, don't forget Serena Kerrigan on this week's Going Deeper and maybe Justin Glaze for Freestyle. But uh, lots to get into on Wednesday for our Freestyle episode. So many hot topics we'll be discussing. Be sure to tune in. Let's get to our callers. When it comes to choosing a wireless plan, you're forced to compromise. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could get reliable service without a contract and save money? Introducing Total by Verizon, a new no contract, no credit check carrier for you and your family with plans starting at just $30 per month. 
on America's most reliable 5G network. Sacrifice nothing, experience everything. Total by Verizon is available at totalbyverizon.com and at retailers nationwide. Based on first place rankings and Root Metrics first half 2022 5G assessments of 125 metros. Experiences vary, not an endorsement. Grammarly, if you're looking to make sure that you're sending the most professional emails without mistakes, whether it's punctuation or grammar, think of Grammarly. The holidays are the time to slow down and take a break from the grind. You know what sucks? When you do all the mental labor of writing a email and then you have to proofread it again and again to make sure you communicate it clearly, that there's no typos, that people won't delegitimize you because of a missed comma. And Grammarly has my back. It is compatible with every single messaging platform I use, whether that's company specific, texting on my computer, email, and it makes sure that everything I'm writing is miscommunication free. It corrects the tone. It will give suggestions for clarity. It really has my back in terms of taking some of the work out of communication. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely great. And just just like Amanda said, it makes you more efficient, more professional. And if you're someone like me who has dyslexia or just not a good proofreader, Grammarly has you covered. Grammarly is free to download and works where you do. Every project gets finished efficiently and confidently. You deserve a break from the grind. Get there confidently with Grammarly Premium. Go to Grammarly.com slash podcast to sign up for an account and download. And when you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium, get 20% off. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's Grammarly.com slash podcast. What's your time with me? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Hi, I'm Lily and I'm 26. How can we help Lily? I think I need to break up with my ex-boyfriend again because uh, we tried to be friends, but now I'm in a new relationship. Okay. So before you met your new boyfriend, what did this friendship look like? (laughs) I mean, nothing crazy. We were just kind of send each other stuff on social media. Like we were, I mean, we lived together, we were best friends. So we would do that anyway. So after he moved out, we just kind of continued that. Like we wouldn't talk like daily or talk all the time. It was more of just like, if something came up, we would like text each other. Like, you know. How long did you guys date for? I was like almost three years. And you lived together? We lived together for about a year. Why'd you break up? I, I mean, I was just over the relationship. Um, I, I mean, he just wasn't my person. We, uh, yeah, I I don't, there's really nothing else to say other than that. So So he's a great, great guy. You ended it ultimately. Yeah. How did he handle it? Not, I mean, he was really upset, like sad, heartbroken, um, kind of in denial at first, like the first, first like month after we broke up, he like moved out and everything. And then randomly like showed back up one day at my apartment and just like things like that. Gotcha. And so this attempt at being friends, was that, did you suggest it because you felt bad and you figured, well, I mean, you're not my person, but I enjoy your company. Or did he suggest it out of desperation of hoping he could have at least some part of you in his life? Which one do you think it was? Yeah, I think it was the second one. And I was just kind of like, oh, I mean, if that's okay with you, like I I wanted to like not try to like not hurt him any more than I already was, which like in hindsight, that probably just wasn't the best idea. Cause Lesson learned. Now we're going to have to break up with them again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been like kind of friends with your ex? Like how long have you been broken up for? Well, so we broke up like over a year ago. It was like I broke up with them like last September. And how often do you hear from them now? Not too often anymore. Like probably in the last six months, it's calmed down, which has been nice. He still like sent me like birthday gifts though, which was like interesting. And he's like sent me gifts like in the past before. And my current boyfriend knows everything. Like I, he knows all the, Yeah. every time he like texts me too, I'm like, Oh, you know, have you ever talked about dating with your ex in this Not new friendship? Really? Yeah. I mean, yes, he, in the beginning, cause like right when I first broke up with him, like I was, I was single. I was happily single, like, you know, dating. I was on dating apps, stuff like that. So he would, he would ask me like specifically, are you dating anyone or, and stuff like that. And I would just be like, you know, I'm, I'm dating, but. Yeah. He has zero interest in being your friend. And this has all been a ploy to hope that you would reconsider. Which is a very human thing for him. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which just, yeah, and I get that. And that just makes me feel even more bad and guilty, I think, at this now at this point that we've I mean, it's definitely here. your fault <laughs> yeah yeah i know i want to like kind of let it like let it on you know yeah um you're human so, it's all right so, well well yeah. intentioned mistake i suppose yeah what what do you want going forward you want them just basically not to reach out and not to send you gifts right so the last the re- most recent thing that happened was i <clears throat> posted on instagram of my current boyfriend and i and it was like the first time i had posted of us it was you know our hard launch if you will and an hour after i posted that i got a text from my ex and he said hi friend with like a little waving emoji and i responded the next morning and i just said hi and he said morning it's been a while since we caught up would would you be down to catch up later and so that's when i wrote into you <laughs> and i was like did okay. you ever respond to that no and i'm just like and that was like was... it was that was like a week ago okay so i'm like i don't know whether to like not respond or and like that sends a message in itself or you know whether i should explicitly kind of draw that boundary you know yeah i definitely think you the nice thing to do would be to respond because mm-hmm. you you agreed wrong or right to be a friend to him mm-hmm. and like yeah like it's it wouldn't be cool to ghost yeah and have him figure it out I mean, he might have he like he knows but in a sense yeah i i think i think you just send a text i don't think you need to get together or have some long cup of coffee no i think you just be direct as possible i don't think you'd be mean but i think you focus more on being direct and kind but more direct than anything else at the risk of hurting his feelings and more importantly at the risks of him being mad at you or accusing you of something. Yeah. Okay. So what, <laughs> what do I even say? Like that, like he said, would you be down to catch up later? Like what in response, like, what do I say to that? Cause no. <laughs> yeah. Just be honest. Sorry. I didn't get back to you right away. I, I, I was thinking about your re- request or your ask. I, I was, you know, I was considering getting to be- together and, you know, after giving it some thought, like, you know, I've, I don't know if you know this, but I'm in a new relationship. It's really new right now. And I really want to focus right at, at, at that. And as much as I care about you as a person, you know, I just, I don't feel like we can maintain this type of friendship that we had because I want to give that energy to this new relationship. So, yeah, I, I just don't know if it's going to be appropriate for us to continue the friendship that we tried to have this okay. past period of time or whatever words you want to use. But yeah, yeah I think you're, yeah. you need to be okay. pretty direct and, and ultimately <clears throat> say that this, this is over, you know, the yeah. expectation, you know, because, and that's what I mean, like the ability to say, let's grab dinner or a cup of coffee. I mean, he's essentially asking you on on these dates and yeah. calling it a friendship meetup, but they're not, you know, he wants to be around you and spend time with you and check in on you and hopes that, you know, at any point you're going to see a glimpse of like something you miss or, you know, or things like that, you know? Yeah. And you, yeah. you're basically telling him in the nicest, but mostly direct way, that's not what this is. And it would be inappropriate. And I want to focus on this. And I don't think I should be getting coffee with my ex-boyfriend, someone I lived with and someone I dated for three years because like we're not friends. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So (laughs) I think you should, you know, key points is letting him know you are dating someone else, letting him know that you want to prioritize that and -hmm. you don't think it's appropriate for you guys to continue the friendship in the form in which you, right? I just don't. Th- right. I think you just say I don't think it's imp- appropriate for us to continue the friendship that we had. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And like I said, it, like looking back in hindsight, I'm like, man, like I should have just cut it off, like like when I broke up yeah. with him, you know. But I guess in my head, I was like, well, like I'd love to be on like good terms, like you know, be run into each other, and yeah. it's like, oh hey, so good to see you, like that kind of a thing. And totally. it definitely just. Yeah, and you are still open to that, right? But he never really was. Like you would be open to running into him in the street or at a party and being cordial and cool and like sure. having a quick conversation, be like, "Oh, is it well? How are you doing? You're dating someone great." But he's not interested in that. He the, the closest thing you got to that is him being like, "Are you dating anyone?" basically checking in on you, but not yeah. seriously interested in like hearing your dating stories and offering yeah. some sort of like genuine advice to help you find the love that you're looking for. That's not what he was trying to do. Totally. And so 
you're still open to that. I don't think you need to say that, but you're saying the type of friendship, like the sending of birthday gifts or occasionally getting together and spending one-on-one time together, like that's the type of friendship you're not open to. The specific yeah. getting together and catching up, that's not, you're not open to that. Like we don't need to catch up. And if he has a problem with that, you could just say like, I don't think you need to get into it with him. Mm -hmm. But if, yeah. if you wanted to, you can hit him with the, when he like asks why or makes any accusations and blah, 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 blah. Like, well, like what's the difference? We are just friends. And you can just say, if he tries to minimize, you know, like almost what you used to have and try to oversell the friendship mm -hmm. that he always wanted, I think you say some version of, well, I have moved on from our relationship. That relationship was meaningful to me. And it wasn't just a friendship. It was a lot more than that. And I don't want to pretend it was something other than that. And, you know, it's like I care about you as a person and I value what we had. And I don't yeah. want to pretend it was something that it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Because awesome. that's what he's trying to do. Like, let's just forget that we dated for three years and right. that we lived together and we talked about a future together and we knew all each other's intimate secrets. And let's just pretend it didn't happen. That's what he wants yeah. to do. And you're saying, yeah. and you, and so if he pushes back, and then in the nicest possible way, you remind him that it was meaningful. It was serious. You had these. And while it might be over, like, it's not as easy to go back. And maybe maybe he'll find comfort in that, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But um, that's what I would do. Okay. All right. I will. Thank you. It's Keep us posted. So <laughs> we'd, love, we'd love to know what you end up sending oh, and how he responds. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I will definitely keep you guys updated for sure. We can draft it right now <laughs> if you want and send it. Uh, should we? <laughs> What do we have to lose? Now is as good of a time as any. All right. Let's see. It's like, hey, sorry. It took me like a while to respond or something like that. Yeah. Hey, sorry. It t took me a while. And you, Ellie and Amanda, please join in if you have any notes. <laughs> please. Sorry. It took me a while to respond. I, I was giving your question some thought. After thinking it through, I don't think it would be good for us to get together and catch up. I recently started seeing someone. And I really want to focus uh, my energy on this relationship. And that one's going to hurt. That sentence is going to hurt, but it needs, it needs to be said. It needs to be said. Yeah. And I feel like that's like, that's a nice way of saying it. Not like I have a boyfriend. No, Stop I, texting I want, but you're, <laughs> I, I want to focus on this relationship. I want him to hear that you are, you, that's, this is where your priorities are going. This is where your energy is going. It's not yeah. a waffle. It's not a like, we'll see how it goes. I want him to think that you're invested regardless of how it plays out. So what do we read it back to me so far? What do we got? <laughs> Okay, we have, hey, sorry it took me a while to respond. I was giving your question some thought, and after thinking about it for a while, I don't think it would be good for us to get together and catch up. I recently started seeing someone, and I really want to focus my energy on this relationship. Yeah. Uh, I've always valued our time together and our friendship, but I don't think it would be appropriate for us to get together and catch up. Given the circumstances? Given our past. I feel like the beginning could be cleaned up a titch just because you say... I was giving it some thought after giving it some thought. Like, I feel like that mm -hmm. can be a little more concise. Like, just say, like, sorry for not, like, basically, sorry for not responding right away. After giving it some thought, I've decided that. I don't think you need to say, sorry, it took me a while. I was giving it some after, thought. Okay. After giving okay. it some thought, like, it just seems a little clunky. See, that's where the grammar yeah, comes yeah, yeah. in. Thank you. <laughs> hey, we appreciate it. <laughs> we need it to be concise. <laughs> men like it. Men like it yeah. direct. <laughs> All right, read it back. Read it back. Okay, okay, wait. So, hey, sorry it took me... What did you say again? Sorry Just it took like, me hey, a while to respond. Period. Yeah. After giving it some thought. After giving it some thought. Mm -hmm. And then go into the rest. I don't think it would be good for us to get together and catch up. I recently started seeing someone, and I really want to focus my energy on this relationship. I have always... I've always, what did I say? Valued? I missed a word there. Valued. Enjoyed? Right. Enjoyed? Valued? Valued. Valued. No, valued. Okay. Because valued is more honest than enjoyed. Okay. I've always valued our time together and our friendship, but I don't think it would be appropriate for us to catch up given our past. Yeah. I think that's good. I hope you understand. Take care and happy holidays. No, you always <laughs> call like, me out. You always you. say you don't best, need that extra best fluff. Best wishes. <laughs> best wishes. No, Nick always tells me that not to include. Joke. I wish you the best. I wish. Uh, he doesn't like that extra disregards. fluff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best. Warmly. <laughs> Sincerely. I hope you understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think I hope you understand. That's a good way to end it. 
One more time, reading it through. Right. Hey, after giving it some thought, I don't think it would be good for us to get together and catch up. I recently started seeing someone and I really want to focus my energy on this relationship. I've always valued our time together and our friendship, and I don't think it would be appropriate for us to catch up given our past. I hope you understand. Amazing. Sweet. Send. Nice. Send. All right. And if he, if he, he probably will just say, he might say nothing, and he might say something really passive aggressive and Kurt, mm-hmm. that, I think that's best case. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if he tries to get into a dialogue with kind of like, what are you talking about? We're just friends. Then I would hit him with uh, like, we were never just friends. We had a very, we had a very meaningful past. And that's something yeah. I, and I do value. And respectfully, like I've had friendships that aren't, co- I have friendships that aren't complicated by a romantic history. Yeah. And I do, mm-hmm. and, and say like, I, I and speak for yourself, you know, forget about what his is like that's I I'm not capable of ignoring what we had and I want to be able to value what we had and not try to, you know, pretend to be just friends. All right, we'll see. I feel like his I don't know what he's gonna say, but it's gonna be something sad, I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> let him be sad. Let him be angry. And this is where you have to be the bigger person and allow him to think of you as the bad guy. This is where okay. you have to let let go and like not wanting to be the bad guy got you into the situation in the first place. Totally. So let him talk his shit or, you know, hopefully he doesn't say or do anything that make is hurtful, but yeah. he's going to be hurting and and just let him get it out. You don't need to be the greatest person in the world to him anymore. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank All you guys right. so much. Good luck. You're Congrats the on the new relationship. Hope it uh, Thank you. Yeah, go, goes happy. well. Keep us updated on the <laughs> response. I will. Definitely will. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. How's it going? Hi. uh, My name is Renee. I am 26 and I'm calling in today. um, So if you guys remember West Elm Caleb, I have my own version of the tale with my neighbor I just met. So we've basically been hanging out all the time. So the point of the story is we live in the same building And that's when things started to get really confusing for me. Um, I have a lot of guy friends, but this one from the the jump just seemed a little different because of all the time we're spending together. Did you meet in the building? We met in the building, yes, in the hallway dramatically. I moved in like four days prior and I was coming home one day and I saw this like very uh, attractive man and I was like, oh, shoot your shot. What's up? And so we just became really fast friends. And I think the dilemma I started to basically start to feel myself getting confused is the dilemma that I'm in of just like, what is this man's intentions? Just because we've been hanging out so much and logistically just being around someone that you see all the time, but also having those confusing feelings has kind of led me to this place of like, what's the deal? What, if anything, do you think he is specifically doing? Because there's the... You find him attractive part. So we know that. That was your first instinct when you saw him. He lives in your building. Convenience. He's always fucking there. And so now you guys have, I'm assuming, developed some sort of rapport of like, well, if I'm bored, I Renee's across the hall or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? And so, but what other than that, other than that situation that you're in in the in the logistics of it all, what if anything is he doing that is confusing you? we were actually very like platonic for the first month and it wasn't confusing. And I was very comfortable just having a new guy friend. And then let's just say we went to the Harry Styles concert and everything changed Obviously, as one does, obviously (laughs) the man, the sexual energy in the room. I don't know. Something was in the air. So you went to a Harry Styles concert and fucked afterwards? No. So I was very much like, I have boundaries, like I won't let things escalate, but like that's when it did start getting very like handsy and like flirty. And then I feel like after that day, we like went on a trip together and it was just very, everyone on the trip was like, are you guys together? Like just very like handsy, touchy, feely. So in two days you went to a Harry Styles concert together and then took a trip? It was like two weeks later, I think we two went on the trip later. together. Okay, where yeah. did you go on a trip? We went to Germany with like a bunch of his friends and my friends. Germany? Yeah. You've been overseas. Well, how many yes. of his friends? Uh, like four of his friends. And I brought one of mine as like backup. It's backup. Okay. And how, yeah. who suggested the trip? The first time we ever hung out, we were like drinking and we're like, wait, this would be so fun. Let's like basically take this overseas. Okay. All right. It was like spur of the moment. We're both very spontaneous people. And I was just like, why not? Okay. How was the trip? 
Um, it was fantastic, but there was an incident that really confused me because I met this like beautiful Australian king, obsessed, so cute. And I had a great night and I was like, I'm going to go shoot my shot with this man. Like we're just friends. So like, I'm going to do my thing. And the next day he had told me that he had um, seen my location and knew where I was and was very upset. You guys are sharing each other's locations. Yes. How did that come to be? Because we were traveling together. So it's like, oh, you know, okay. we want to make sure we're looking out for our friends. Oh, so this but happened like, on the vacation. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Fair enough. And then he got like pretty mad about that. Mad or frustrated? I don't know what he would say. He was just like made a point to tell me that he like knew where I was. And like, I don't really know what his angle in doing it was. But then he like hooked up with someone else. It just got kind of messy. And then I was like feeling like I was losing control of the situation. So then I tried to kind of like step back and just like, remember, like, we're just friends. Like, I can't let this escalate. Like, this is not how friends act. Like, we can't be like mad at each other for hooking up with other people. And yet it seemed like you both were. Were. Yeah, for sure. In that moment. Have you talked to him about your expectations, each other's expectations? I think we've talked about, yeah, we had a conversation after about like our friendship and how like important we are to each other and just like expectations but I, I, to be honest, like when people are drinking and saying things, like I didn't feel like that was like fair and mature of me to kind of say like, hey, because I don't know what he was insinuating by telling me, like I knew where you were. It could have been just like a friendly, like I knew where you were last night. So I didn't want to take that as some data point. Like without worrying about sounding crazy or blah, blah, blah. I just want your honest interpretation of how it felt. Like what was his energy? You know, if... It felt very like you did this to me, so I'm going to do this to you kind of thing. All right. That's probably what it was. Yeah, that's probably what it was. You know, as someone who's not trying to read into it, I mean, yeah, it sounds like there was a hint of jealousy or confusion even on his part uh, of what this was. How old is this guy? 28. 28. Why did you guys go to Harry Styles together? Like, why? Why him? Like, why not any of your many friends? I just love hanging out with him. He's one of my favorite people in the world. And like... He's one of your favorite was, people in the world and you find him attractive. Yeah, but I don't... Why don't you want to date him? I've done a lot of like work on myself of what I okay. want in a partner. And I just think there were some issues that I've seen that I'm like, I don't see this Such as long what? term. You, you have sat down at some point, at least mentally in your head, and considered whether he was a potential yeah, dating option. For sure. Yeah. I think when I met him, that's what I was thinking. And then I just realized like... Early on, I felt like there were some red flags that I was, and I'm sure he would say the same about me of just like, there are things that there's a reason why we're always like, we're friends, we're friends, we're friends. And we always talk about how we're best friends, which I now understand is like getting into the territory of like the love bombing of it all. But I feel like we kind of do that to each other. What do you mean by love bombing of it all? Like we like, I don't know, there's been mentioned like, oh, I love you. You're my best friend. And I just feel like now in hindsight, like that's not something that. Do you have a strong, I mean, that's not love bombing, even if it's, even if you reconsidered it, but like people say, I love you to friends all the time, you know, like it doesn't have to be some, and do you care about them? Oh, so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people don't talk about what love means to them. You know, when I say I love you to people, it can mean a bunch of different things. And it does mean a lot of different things to certain people. I usually don't have to be like, to like to friends, well, just, you know, I'm not in love with you. (laughs) You know, you kind of know, you guys aren't, you know, when I say to a friend, love you, bye, you know, on the phone or something, I don't have to like articulate, like, just so you know, I'm not in love with you. You know, I have a girlfriend type of thing. You guys, on the other hand, it's a little bit more confusing. Yeah. Because you are, and you're, you're playing the role of boyfriend and girlfriend in a lot of ways. Yeah. And you, when you met him, thought, here's this like attractive guy. And then you thought, am I compatible with this guy? Is he a romantic, par- is he potentially a romantic partner? I'm guessing he had the same discussion with himself. For sure. But you guys never had that with each other. You guys just... No. And that's what you need to do. And I think there's been like a a question mark I've had too of just like us sitting down together and saying, oh, you know, I would really want to date someone. And if I would date someone, they would be a best friend of mine and funny and make me a better person and all these things that I know he says about me, but he's saying it to me, but it's not using my name. Give me an example. Well, that's what he's like said to me to my face of like, I really want to be in a relationship with someone. And then he like describes all these attributes that like, I know I fit in his life. Like, you know, being, having a start, a strong friendship to start and like someone who challenges him, 
and someone who like makes him a better person, which are all things that he's very generously said about me, which I really appreciate. Okay. Um, and I like thank the world of him. So it's just confusing when you're in my situation, hearing that and it being like, is this some kind of like subliminal messaging or you literally mean like you want that and it's not me. I mean, have you ever asked? No, because I just think it's like ruin the friendship, like that Demi Lovato song, you know? What friend? I mean, it's, you know, if you ruin the friendship, no, what you are is you're going to ruin this kind of very convenient Sure, in some ways, friendship. But like when you say friendship, when you, people say, I don't want to ruin a friendship, you, it's like you're referring to this like long time friendship, something you really value having in your life. And I, I think you like having him in your life right now. And you certainly have valued the moments you've had together. But like this isn't a friendship like your friendships that you've cultivated over the years and your kind of ride or dies, your girls or long-term friendships. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think we sure. both agree that there's like a lot of ways that this relationship of what friendship or whatever you want to call it could go south and you guys don't feel comfortable talking, right? You already can acknowledge yeah. that, right? So if you value this friendship then of at all, then you, like as opposed to being afraid of risking the friendship, you need, this is about saving the friendship or the relationship. Why is he not compatible? Why are you not compatible with him? Do you think? I just think like I've dated enough to know that like I'm very drawn to someone who's very, I feel like it takes a lot of time for people to like understand their own self-worth. And like, I've done enough work on myself to know, like, I want someone to be like a hundred percent committed to me, want to be with me and not playing games, if you will. And I just think some of the, the ways we act around each other feel like a game and it doesn't feel like where I'm at in my life. And that's why I don't know if I'm just misreading his intentions and he genuinely just thinks we're friends or it is some game. It just feels like this like chase of like, will they, won't they, will they, won't they to the point that friends of his have even been like, I'm so confused. Like, do you guys hook up? Like, it's so hard to tell. And like, I'm not attracted to that kind of like indecision. I want someone who wants to be with me. Yeah. But you're, you're a part of this confusion. You're playing a role. Like I haven't yeah. heard anything from you that suggests that you're doing everything you can to avoid the confusion. And he just keeps like resisting having wanting to have conversations like you're playing a role in, in this. Yes and no, because I am in the sense that like I'm definitely have my flaws and I've, you know, had nights where I'm like, oh, that felt too flirty. But I've been very clear to just like say for right now, like we are just friends and this is how friends act and this is how friends speak to each other. And I just feel like in his like flirty banter, he like crosses that line in a way that I have asked him like not to do of just very like flirty, like insinuations about like our relationship and like, oh, and that's why people are always confused. And I'm very like, please stop saying that, like visibly uncomfortable. Give me an example. Just like making jokes about how like, oh, you know, like, oh, well, we hooked up last weekend. So that's like why I have the cold that you have. And like all his friends laugh or something. So he makes up a story about you guys hooking up? Yeah. That's weird. It is weird. And I've been like, please don't do that. What does um, he say? And I think, yeah. So like, I would n I've never done that or said that. And like, of course, you know, we're really good friends. And I, I'm not, I'm not trying to act like, oh, I'm so like innocent. Like, I know I definitely... I'm like a sarcastic person and I get that that's confusing too because I feel like we kind of like have really senses of similar sense of humor but I like asked him to just be like if we're friends which we are I need you to like hold yourself accountable and kind of start treating me as like a female friend in your life and not seeing it as like a a woman in your life that you like approach as someone you met on a dating app like I'm trying to get him to just approach us for what we are which is just really good friends and you've said exactly that to him yeah. What did you say? I think he's just like, oh, well, like, you know, I'm just messing around and joking and I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Like, I just think it's funny. And then you say. And then I say, like, you know, I just I, I, I just try to, like, reiterate without being too like it's hard for me because it's a new relationship. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that we're even having these conversations with someone I don't know super well. So I'm trying. I think that's part of what I need to do is be more like assertive in what I say. But I just say, like, I know you think it's funny, but it's, like, not funny to me. It's actually, like, upsetting me. And then he's like, I don't want to upset you, so, like, I'll try to be better kind of thing. I mean, you don't have to try to not make up stories about you guys hooking up. You can either 
don't do it or do it. You yeah. Know? Like, and that flirt- wasn't, that's not an every time thing. That okay. just like was an example. I was flirting like, flirting is a little that. more vague. I mean, people can perceive flirting a million different things where he, that's a little more gray, but like that is something he could pretty much, he doesn't have to try to do it. He can just stop doing it. Yeah. And um, he did in his defense. Well, good. I still, it, it still sounds to me like you've, I mean, it's good that you said that, but you haven't really sat down and just had an adult conversation about what this is. You sit him down and be like, can we talk? And I just want I want to talk about us. It's been confusing to me. That's what you need to say. And I think you just be totally honest. And that honesty it says, you know, when we met, obviously I found you attractive and I thought about the possibility of us dating and see what he says, get him to be honest. Yeah, I did too, you know? Like that, you you both acknowledging that, you know, like just put it out there. Because what your guys are trying to do is figure out how to like, you're trying to talk about it without not talking about it because you don't want to make it weird, but at the same time you still want to hang out and then you want to take trips together and go to Harry Styles and like embrace the moment and you both find each other like physically attractive to some degree. And there's aspects of each other that you really value. And there's a lot of aspects of each other that you really like. And the only thing that I've heard from you about you not being compatible is it sounds like you think he still might be in his like fuckboy era. Well, yeah. And I did in your book look for the definitions. And I was like, oh, this is hitting. So why don't you just be honest with him about that? To me, what I'm hearing is someone who met a great guy, lots of things you like about him. You're trying to make smarter moves, right? and protect yourself by investing into fuck boys and you see the signals in people. And so you have said, okay, well, he's a fuck boy right now, so I can't date him. So I'm still going to have to try to have this person in my life via a friendship. And then you try to, you know, set some boundaries with yourself, which are great. But I think you're, you're also, it's like you're doing all the things right, but you're also mm-hmm. not being realistic with yourself. You are still lying to yourself a little bit about, trying to make this guy who fits a lot of things that you like and maybe keep him around in your life for maybe when he's not in this fuckboy era. I don't know what your intentions are and maybe they are just to enjoy someone that you enjoy. You first saw him as a potential dating option. And like you said, by your own words, you you kind of still just met. This is not like someone you first met seven years ago. And, and, you know, yeah, Yeah. I thought he was cute seven years ago, but now I just see him as my brother and we're just friends and we're truly just friends. Like... There is a world where you guys get pretty fucked up, go to another Harry Styles concert and really embrace the moment. Next thing you know, like you guys are exchanging fluids and you wake up next to each other. <laughs> like that's not, doesn't sound that hard to believe, you know? And yeah, maybe you'd wake up I with some regret yeah. and be like, oh fuck, why did I do that? But it sounds like you guys would be capable of of giving into the moment. Certainly it sounds like he's already down, but like you, all you need to have is a moment of weakness and it's entirely possible. Like this is a guy yeah. is not your brother. Right. And that did kind of recently almost happen. And I think I, I am being kind of like the fact that I'm even ending up in that situation multiple times is definitely a sign that like, I think my like rational brain is like, oh, make the mature decision that you feel like is best for you in your life. And then like my gut and my intuition, they're like fighting. And I think it's like the head heart thing where I'm like, I know that this isn't what I want it to be right now. And so I'm trying to like make the smart decisions, but then when we're around each other so much, I just feel like my heart starts to take over and I'm just like getting confused. Yeah, We're such good friends. And like, to be honest, I just feel like it's this doubt and fear of like, I don't want to lose this person. They're so important in my life. And I just worry that if I am honest about my confusion, even it will like break the foundation of what we have, which is like, he just is such an, I mean, we hang out so much that that would just really devastate me to like not have that dynamic anymore. I know, but you're not totally making sense, right? And what I mean by that is like, on one side, you're saying we just met, we've only known each other for a few months. And then all of a sudden you're just like, I value him so much Mm -hmm. And I value all the time we spend together. It's like, which one is it? Someone you just met or someone who's a really important person in your life? Like, and I understand you can meet someone and it can be exciting. And you can like, like when you meet someone and you start dating like a honeymoon phase, but like you're having all of the honeymoon phase with someone, but because you're someone who's trying to like protect yourself and you're reading great books, like don't text your ex happy birthday and listening (laughs) to podcasts and you're setting boundaries 
And like, I commend you for trying to do that, but you're still lying to yourself a little bit and you're not having these upfront conversations and sending expectations with people. You're still avoiding those awkward conversations a little bit. You're trying, you're sprinkling them in. You need to have the conversation with him and it needs to be super honest and super adult and just, just guys got to be open with each other. Got to put it all on the table table. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it's going to go. And there, and it mm -hmm. might, a couple things might happen. You know, maybe you realize that you want to take a risk on something romantic. Maybe you guys are both like, you know what? Yeah, we are just friends. Yeah, we both thought each other were hot or attractive. We both consider dating, but now we truly are honest with each other and we just want this. Maybe you be honest with them about like, honestly, there's a lot of things I like about you, but if I'm being completely honest and not judgment, I just, it seems like you're in your fuckboy era. And I don't, I'm not calling you a fuckboy. I just think right now you seem to like, want to date around and that's great. And I'm just, and, and, and here's why I think this. And you don't mm -hmm. say it in as a, an attacking way. It, and I think it yeah. should include all these conversations. And it might, this conversation might lead to you guys taking some time apart and it might lead to some awkwardness. But I think if you really are adult about it, you can still be friendly and friends, but you know, you might not be going to Harry Styles concerts anymore. And I don't think you should be. It just does, does not sound like a guy who's your like homie, like you're only human. And you're eventually going to give in to the moment. And then, then it's really going to get messy because you will, then you'll panic and you'll pull back. If you really want to save whatever this is, I think you really need to like have a mature and adult conversation, which is what friends do. Close friends who care about each other do. They have tough conversations sometimes and they just put it all on the table. Okay. My asterisk to that though, is if I independently come to the conclusion of like, this is not someone I want to date. That's what I am trying to figure out. Like, does it even matter what his intentions are? Does it even matter what his feelings are? If I wholeheartedly can come to the conclusion of like, this is not a match for me. Like, that's what I'm struggling with is like, do we still need to have this conversation? And maybe so. Are you truly there? I think like after recently, like things that have happened and just comments that have been made and things that have been said, I just, I do think I'm very close to getting there. Like, just like, I really just think we're better off as friends. Like what? What comments? And because like, this is, you know, you guys are both confused right now and it's, I, I can see, not to make excuses, but like I can see, it sounds like he's grappling with the same challenges as well and he's doing insane things that like either don't make sense or sound weird or off-putting or confusing, you know, because it's, it's tough to try to pretend to be friends with someone you also like are kind of into. And like kind of living with in a weird way. Yeah. Down the hall. Very. Like the apartment of it all, so... That also stresses me out. I yeah. I, I at some level, you, there's a conversation that hasn't happened that needs to happen. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I do think you need to just be honest. Yeah, and like to your point, as much as we've talked, I feel myself like cr crafting a narrative that has parts of the truth missing. Yes, exactly. Yes. So I own that, and I like know that. I think it's just like me trying to do the thing that I think will lead to the like path of least resistance of just like, this is the way to fix all this of just like, we're going to be friends and that's how it's going to be. And I kind of told myself, like, if I hit a breaking point of like, I really want to date you, like, I will say that, but because I'm not there, it just doesn't feel like the necessary thing to do. But well, that, that's the thing. Cause there's still, even if it's that 1%, you know, there yeah. is still that part of you that's like, maybe not now, but maybe in the future, unless you see him as a guy, if like the idea of him naked makes you go, okay, just please put some clothes on. Like, you know, that's the energy you need for him to truly be your friend. And unless, unless that's the case, then, you know, I have women friends or I've had women friends that are beautiful people. And even like, we've even, we've even like had a past, but like once we became friends, I truly was just like, you're my friend. Like, this is not. Nah. And it wasn't hard for me to, to do that or feel that way. There was never a chance for us to have a moment of weakness. Like, it didn't matter how much we drank. It wasn't complicated. It was very clear. And I don't know how you get there. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from being truly honest and transparent and, and not trying to find it through the past of least, least resistance. I think you need to face the resistance. Turn up that resistance. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you should just be vulnerable with him and say, I really care about you. I I've had some of the best f fun I've had in a long time, but this is getting complicated for me. And here is why I have thought about dating you. I, and I, right now I don't, I don't think that's possible. And here's why I, I just think you guys truly need to put it all on the table to see if you can figure out a way to actually be friends 
and just friends or, or, or take some time off from whatever this is or try. I don't know, but it's one of those three things. And you're not going to get to any of those three buckets by doing what you're doing. And that is right. to that kind of avoid having tough conversations and like kind of passive aggressive remarks and occasionally like setting a boundary like, hey, that's weird. Don't do that. Because he's going to, you know, you say that's weird. Don't do that. He's like, what do you mean weird? I don't know. Like, I'm just hanging out with my friend. I'm just being comfortable with my friend. I'm joking with my friends. I'm fucking around. Yeah. Guys make like off-putting jokes with their buddies all the time. And if you really want to be his buddy, then. Well, that was the recent conversation we had of like, I'm not your like bro. And like. Then what are I you? See what you mean. That's it's fucking like, confusing. What, yeah. Like, what is that? That's what I'm saying. The cognitive dissonance. It's like getting too much. And that's why I do think it's like. I do think I'm going to reach that point. I just think I want, I feel very protective over the relationship, which is probably more to your point. Like, why do you feel so protective over it? You know, like, why is there so much like care and attention there? Um, and it is confusing because I just, I don't think that it's going to work out in the way that I want it to. And I'd rather just kind of. That's what I think. I think you really care about him. I think there's a world in which you would love to try to date him. And I think your gut tell is telling you that at the end of the day, there's a better chance he's going to hurt you in the long run. And you don't want to get hurt by him. Yeah. And you value right. his friendship. And so you're hoping to have what you have right now because you don't want to get hurt. Or just, I don't want the, like this person that I've seen in my eyes, like that, that perception I have to be shattered. So like yeah. same thing. I just mean like if you feel like you're better off with friends with someone, like sometimes it is about just, in my opinion, like not being so focused on his perception of what's going on and ask myself, what do I want? What do I see in a partner? Who do I see myself with? And if he can't match all those things, then we should just be friends. Or not. I don't think you guys can be friends. I, I, I really, from what you're telling me, this friendship, as I've often said, or I say in my book, it, like this, yeah. has, what th whatever this is, absolutely has an expiration date. You did say that in the book. You did? It, it's just, it is. Like a, for what this is now, at its current state, it has an expiration date. You can't, you're not going to be mm. able to, you're not going to Harry Styles concerts with this guy if you meet a guy or if he meets a girl. You're not taking trips to Germany. You know, you're not going on dinner dates. You're not, you know, popping in each other's apartments if you meet someone else. It's just not happening. By avoiding these conversations, it's just going to get messy and feelings will get hurt. And you're ultimately, what I'm hearing is you're trying to avoid hurting each other's feelings and specifically your own, which I totally understand. But you also care about that guy. And like, again, you're, you're trying to learn from past mistakes by not investing in people that you realize that I'm getting, I'm getting too many red flags. And while I think you're a great guy, but you can't give me what I'm looking for in a relationship. I love that you can recognize that. But now you need to go on one step further. Listen, eventually you're going to have to take a risk with someone. And I can't, no matter how many books you read or podcasts you listen to, like you can't prevent yourself from getting hurt again, you know, or being hurt by someone. You just can't like you're, you're eventually going to have to take a chance and go for it and get hurt and be like, oh, I should have saw that. Like, you're not going to see every warning sign. And sometimes you might see a red flag or two and, and choose to ignore it and see if you guys can work on it together. And like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to communicate with you like these. Why this is why I think you can't give me what I want. And he's going to probably try to show you that he can. It might, that might be a bit disingenuous because when people are challenged, they want to rise to the occasion and realize, you know, it's not really for me. But you, are, you aren't being honest with yourself about what this relationship is. It's not just a friendship. It absolutely is going to expire at some point. And the only question is, is are you guys, how long are you guys going to pretend to be just friends while doing this and then avoid dating other people because deep down you know you can't do both? Or are you going to have this conversation now and see if you can get to a place where you are truly going to be just friends? And maybe that's after taking some time apart and really thinking about it and setting some boundaries and, and figuring out like whether you can kind of become homies and be okay with him treating you that way and vice versa. No, I agree. Because I think what, you're, what I'm hearing is like, it doesn't matter if I'm 99%, like I don't want this, even if there is a 1% or even if, same with him, like I feel like part of me, the anxiety of like the validation aspect of like our attachment styles being different. I've been worrying so much of like, oh, that anxious attachment coming out. Like, what does he want? And like trying to seek that from him. And I've tried to close that channel and be like, it doesn't, why are you so focused on what he wants? Like, think about what you want. But I think what you're saying is like, regardless, like I should still be having this conversation, even if, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's not about focusing. Does he like me? Does he not? Like, that's not the right question. It's just like, what are we doing and how can we actually proceed organically yeah. and naturally before this like... I think it's more, yeah. It's like, can we sit down and talk? I want to talk about us. This is mm -hmm. how I see us. 
this is how I viewed us. This is how I viewed you throughout the process. And at any point you want to speak up and tell me how you feel about us, please. I want, I want this to be a really honest conversation. I really care about you. I value what we've built so far, but like, this is, I think we can both recognize that this is like getting more complicated. Like you shouldn't be with your friend having to like check him all the time and be like, don't do this, say that. Like, cause you're trying to, you're trying to cultivate a friendship that doesn't really exist. There's no playbook for, you're trying to like, you know, build your own friendship, so to speak. And in, a, in mm-hmm. a way that's like fitting all your needs and avoiding all the ch- ways that you could possibly get hurt. And that's just not being realistic. At some point, you're gonna have to take a risk and be willing to take hurt, be hurt. But like, and I don't know if it's this guy, but like just be vulnerable and be honest and put it, put it out there and see where you go from there and see if he's capable of having these very mature and honest and awkward conversations. That might go a long way to seeing if he's the type of person who would be willing to have these conversations with you and work through challenges and difficult times, which might like give you a little more confidence to take a risk if that 1% turns into two or three or four or five or 10%, you know, you wanting to do something with him. So you're basically saying like, even in this moment, even if I know I don't want it right now, I should still be having the conversation. Yes. And not waiting it any longer. Correct. Yeah. Regardless of the apartment. Correct. Just um, okay. You're just gonna ha- you're just the... you're just gonna have to be adults as far as the apartment goes. When we do have tough conversations, he's very receptive. But I just think maturity wise, like we're just on a match right now. I don't think that means we would ever like it's forever. I just think that's yeah. why right now it's easy for me to push down the feelings of like, oh, this isn't what I want, but. I'm going to say one more thing and then we have to go but yeah, 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 uh, yeah. and then a follow up. But I also, I'm getting a sense, I think you need to stop trying to figure him out. You know, I think mm. you need to stop trying to diagnose him. I think you need to stop mm-hmm. trying to like tell him how he is or like do his homework, you know, whether it's attachment yeah. style or all these things. Like you clearly have invested and kind of tried to figure out all the ways to like whether he's a safe option to date or not. And like you need to stop doing that. If, if, and you can tell him how you feel about what you see in him, but you need to stop trying to diagnose him like you're some therapist or some doctor to like figure out whether he's a safe option. And I think you're doing a little bit of that. Internally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't say that to him. No, God, no, I know that. But, but like... you're doing it in your head. Anything you stop doing in your head. I think you should, if you're going to do it at all, you should do it with him. This is yeah. what I notice, you know? like Yeah, that's why like, I agree, like doing the work is fun, but I think sometimes I'm like overthinking it and it's yeah. like, it shouldn't, be all that. So Just thank talk. you. That's, that's very helpful. Okay. All right. We'll keep us posted. I will. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Good. My name is Taylor and I'm 25 years old and I need some help setting some boundaries with um, my aunt. She's on my dad's side. So my dad's sister. For some context, both of her children have really tragically passed away in car accidents. Her daughter in 2016 when she was 16 years old and her son, um, it'll be a year in December and he was 29. Her daughter and I um, were born six weeks apart, so my existence is kind of a really big trigger for my aunt. You know, we were really close, like best friends, and, you know, there was a lot of milestones we should have gone through together, and um, she's got a, she's having a hard time handling her grief, and she feels a lot of anger and takes it out on me, and I'm, I'm ready to put a stop to it. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you seem really fed up. Which I can only understand, but how long has this been going on for? It's been eight years since her daughter died that I've kind of been a target for her. It started off as just really sad and depressing comments on my Facebook posts, things like, my daughter is never going to get to do that. I'm never going to get to do these things. And it's really escalated in the last couple of months. In the springtime, she made a post that said, it's obvious who favorite grandchildren were and all I'll ever be is a shadow in her daughter's eye. And then about a month ago was the one that really pushed me over the edge. And when I sent you an email, so the post says I should have never had children just for God to kill them and make me suffer. Why could you not take my brother's loser kids? Nobody would miss them. And that's what really set me over the edge. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. Is this a picture of your cousin? And does she still have the picture of her daughter in that profile picture? Yeah. So that's her daughter in the profile picture. And then the male profile that's above hers, that's her son. Gotcha. Okay. 
What does your dad say about this? So my dad is a pastor, um, and I grew up in a Christian household, and my faith is something that is still really important to me. Mm -hmm. And he says that we need to, you know, forgive her and move on. And I know that there is some truth to that. I know from my heart, I need to forgive her, but there needs to be some sort of accountability here. Well, I am not an expert on these types of things. So, you know, take whatever, anything I say with a grain of salt. I don't know if there needs to, like, what do you mean by accountability? Like, so, af- so after this post, you know, a couple days later, she uh, got her dog certified as a emotional support animal. And people were just, you know, commenting, oh, that's so good for you. Like, you know, so happy for you. And she, she just, she does it over and over again. And there's no, nobody's brave enough to tell her she needs to stop. Stop harassing you yeah yeah have you tried blocking her i I haven't i mean that's step one we're not friends on facebook what is where this comments on facebook right those are like public posts on her page yeah on her page yeah well i mean you still blocking her would stop you from seeing it i don't Mm -hmm. put it this way like i don't think anyone if someone read this right which i'm sure people did were you silly enough to read the comments i did read the comments what did the comments say some people were saying you need to stop you need to get help so there was you know people okay. coming to see that for my brother and i yeah so that's what i'm saying you know like no one's read these comments and going yay you yeah right go girl you know what i'm saying like she's not looking good doing this i think you're seeing people you know someone has to put a stop to it right and she got the support dog and they were supportive and positive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess is, and that happened shortly after this message, you took that as like, how are we, how are we, how are we okay with this? How are we okay with her saying this about me? And yeah. now you're supporting her and this fucking dog, which I totally get. But I'm confident in saying that like, that's not what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? I think these are people are looking at it's two separate things or they're looking at it as, oh, thank God she's not saying crazy ass shit on Facebook anymore about other people dying. She's like doing something positive, which is maybe the support dog will stop her from making crazy posts like this. Like that's how these people are seeing it. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, the accountability that you are kind of hoping for, I think you got to try to like reframe that mentality. Uh, I don't think you need to like actively like want her in your life and just look the other way and forgive her and constantly have her around because like what she is doing is affecting your emotional well-being and health. And it can only like I'm sure you dealt with loss when your cousin died. And I'm sure like that was painful for you and not to compare it to what she felt as a mother, but like. And then like being compared to that and being felt me being made to feel like that is terrible. So like what you need to try to do is try to, however you can distance yourself and, and create that separation and create those actual like physical boundaries. Cause this is really just about like you setting in and enforcing your boundaries. This is not about you trying to figure out how you can hold someone else accountable. You trying to hold someone accountable, that's going to take you a ton of energy and you're going to feel a little alone, right? Because you kind of like you are now. You're like, why is it, why is she getting away with this? Is probably like a, a feeling you might be feeling, right? Yeah. And then yeah. trying to figure out ways to hold her accountable, to let people know what is she doing, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's taking a lot of your emotional energy. And while it's not okay what she's doing, I think people are just trying to empathize. Like no one, most people have no idea what it's like to deal with the loss of a child, you know, like that. And two, oh my God, like how, how sad and tragic. And so I think when people read this, while they might say, hey, you need help and stop this, they're just like, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'd be fucked up about it type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I can never imagine like, you know, the grief that she's feeling, but it's, also, it's confusing to my grief too. Yeah. Like it may, sometimes it makes me feel like, like I don't have a right to grieve, even though I had a relationship with her kids. Totally. I, I just think this is more about now what's your rela- what's your dad's relationship with her? Like how actively are they involved in talking? Well, so after that that post about her brother's loser kids, he he said that he doesn't want to see her anymore, but he know that he needs to because his parents are sure. old and you know having these operations done and he needs to be there for them, but he's also going to see her. He just doesn't want to see her anymore. He's, he's tired of it, but he's still going to be put in positions where he has to. 
Yeah, I, which I understand. But the important thing is it sounds like you have the support of your dad. He's not ignoring it. You know what I'm saying? He's not saying, oh, it's a big, not like, you know, think about her. And then like you guys are actively hanging on a regular basis and you have to constantly be forced to like face your aunt and sit in the same room with her knowing that she said that. That's not going on, which is good, right? Mm -hmm. I just think you need to try to distance yourself however you can. You need to... You need to stop looking at her page and you need to You're going to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you need to like ask your friends and families to say, if you see anything, just don't let me know. Mm -hmm. But you're doing the opposite right now. Now that you know she's capable of saying stuff like this, now you're keeping an eye on her. And I get it. You know, it's like having a social media following. You know, I'm not this is this is a bad comparison, but this is the closest I can come up with. Right. But like having a social media following you know, people will message me all the time. I often try to like not read messages and things like that. But every once in a while through, through work or people who listen to the show reach out and, you know, with, with, with my book coming out, I'm trying to like share people's like reviews and things like that. But sometimes if you check, if I check comments too much and like, let's say I'll have like a, a troll or, you know, who's like commenting, like there's mm -hmm. this mentality that I'll keep checking to see if they stopped, you know, and it, it just becomes this kind of pattern, this rabbit hole type of mentality. And you're, you're, you have that same kind of mentality right now. It's just like, even though you should just not look, you, you're looking to see if she's doing another one as, as if you could stop it and you can't stop it. But like you, there's something in your brain is telling you, you would rather know than not know that she's doing this. And I don't know if that really helps you. I mean, ignorance is truly bliss in these situations. To start, I would do the simple things like block her, ask your friends and family not to let you know if she makes another remark. I don't believe anyone out there is reading these messages and agreeing with her. She is outing herself as someone who really needs help, who really mm -hmm. is suffering, who is really hurting. That's all she's really doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing for her. But like no one's, this is no one's, no one's like reading this and go, well, who are her loser kids and how big of losers are they? And do they deserve, like, did they deserve it? No one's thinking that, right? No one's reading that and actually taking her comment into consideration. This is just a woman who is suffering and hurting and it doesn't make an excuse for what she's did. And I think it just might help you understand why she's doing it so that you can distance yourself as much as you can. So that you can say it doesn't really honestly affect me. I mean, it affects me, but it, it's the knowing that she's doing it is what really hurts me and other people seeing it. And like you said, it's like it stops your ability to grieve, right? Well, part of you is focusing your energy on trying to hold her accountable rather than focusing your energy on grieving. I don't know why it makes more sense to hear someone else say, you know, like I can say those things to myself or my husband can or my dad can, but and I was just hearing someone else say it. Like an outsider, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a fresh, a fresh voice. I understand. So you just, I think, try to help yourself here in these situations, and in any of these actions with your aunt, I think you should like have that conversation with yourself. Like, is this really helping my mental health? Is this helping me grieve? Is this helping me heal? Or am I getting invested in these kind of toxic thoughts? Because your your aunt has some toxic toxic thoughts going on right now. And you watching her is evolving yourself more than you need to. I know it's tricky because obviously she's literally making some really off-putting remarks about you and saying some really evil things. But like she's not evil. She's just really hurting. Mm -hmm. Have you thought, and I don't, like I said, I don't really know your relationship with your aunt, but like have you ever thought of just maybe like, First, maybe writing a letter to her without maybe even sending it at first to express to her how you might be feeling or how she's making you feel that has like that's filled with empathy, but also like I, I, I'm just this is spitballing here. I'm not saying you should even mm -hmm. do it. I'm just in my thought. I'm wondering, write a letter just to mm -hmm. express yourself and then read it a couple of times. And maybe it's worthy. Maybe run it by your husband or your dad. And then maybe you do send it by saying this is really hurtful to to hear. I don't appreciate it. I'm sorry you're hurting. I, I don't want to compare, but like, this is, I think everyone's sad. They were wonderful people. You know, they're, you know, I miss her every day. I miss him every day, et cetera, et cetera. But like, I, I also miss you. Maybe say that. I miss the person I used to have and I'm sorry you're hurting and in pain, but I am still here and I hope that you're happy about that. And if we ever can have a relationship in the future, I would love that. But you know, something like that. And, and that, that will humanize you to her. Maybe she'll read the letter 
and and do another shitty Facebook post. I, I don't know her like mental state right now, but I could see that. That's a really good idea yeah. because there is truth to, to what you said. Like I do miss the relationship that we had when I was in college. She used to take me out once a week for lunch and to get our nails done. And I just, I miss that relationship. And so I think that's, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So maybe you write it. And again, the focus is on empathizing with her, letting her, you mean, you want to let her know how much that hurt you, but you understand that she's hurting. But more importantly, like, well, I don't think it's okay for me, you to be in my life right now because some of those words were hurtful. I hope that, I hope that you're able to heal because I do miss you. And I hope that we can, we can get through this together or our, our, you know, et cetera, something along those lines. And I would have very low expectations for that letter, but mm -hmm. you also might feel like, hey, well, one, you've done everything you could do. I think it'll make you feel good just to get it out. I think so too. Even in the letter, you could say like, those comments really hurt me. So I had to block you because like seeing that really affected my mental health. But like, that's not because I don't love you or and it's not because I don't want a relationship with you. I just, I don't want to read comments about wishing me dead, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and see where that goes, you know, and just tell, uh, we all love you. My dad loves you. We miss you. We hope we can get through this. I'm sorry you're hurting. If I can help, let me know. Blah, 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 something like that. That's a really good idea. I really like that. But in the meantime, stop stop watching her. I know. <laughs> I'm going to do it. But do you think it's fair um, for me to not want to be around her at Christmas? Of course. You know, when yeah. grandma has everyone over. I think it, until she changes, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with you setting some very rigid boundaries and completely distancing yourself from any contact with her whatsoever. I think it's totally reasonable because like that might be so difficult for you. And how do I explain, how do I explain those boundaries to my parents? Because like I've had, you know, conversations with them about boundaries and they don't understand boundaries because they say their generation never set boundaries. And so to them, boundaries are just an easy way to get out of doing something you don't want to do. Well, you know what you say, you know, I, I respectfully disagree, mom and dad. Like maybe you need to like update yourself. Boundaries aren't about getting out uh, of doing something you don't want to do. It's about protecting your mental health and 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 not forcing yourself into very difficult and toxic situations. Like I'm not quitting on anti whatever. Like God knows I've tried, but like I will draw a line when it comes to people making comments like this around me because it just makes me feel terrible and I don't want any part of that. And I'm willing to forgive her. I do forgive her. I don't even hold anything against her, but I'm, what I'm not willing to do is put myself in the same room as someone who, who literally wishes me dead. Yeah. I don't believe her, but like she literally did that. And so I just need to like set that boundary and keep that space because like it's just affecting me. I don't think there's not a, you can't convince me of a situation. I don't think I'm being the bigger person by like suffering unnecessarily by putting myself in the same room as a woman who we can all agree just like mentally is not healthy right now and is saying some really dark and inappropriate things. And I don't get any points for being the bigger person by like putting myself in the same room with this person. What, am I, what are we accomplishing? If she's willing to like have a conversation, if she's willing to like, you know, make some peace, I'm there. I'll, I'll have that conversation. I'll give her as many chances as she asks for. But right now, all we know about Auntie is that she is in this really dark place and she's literally wishing me ill will. And that's not something that I want for my mental health. And I think you just explained to mom and dad that. And you can respectfully, as an adult, disagree with your parents, you know? I'm just going to have to stick to my guns. Yeah. <laughs> after, I, after I have that conversation with them. And maybe this is a teachable moment for mom and dad. You know, maybe give them a... There are some things that, like, we're just not meant to, like, put up with, you yeah. know? Yeah, and this is one of them. And this is, like... I know she doesn't mean it, but, like, it's a, it's a it's abusive to for me to, like read these th comments about me and then, mm -hmm. and then put myself in the same kind of space as her only to potentially hear more comments. I don't want to risk that. And I don't think that's me being lazy or, or just not wanting to do something respectfully, mom and dad. And I think you just kind of say that. I do not think there's any limit to how many boundaries you set 
around this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's always okay. I think all you really need is hopefully to have the support of your husband, which it sounds like you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. He's and, too good for me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but he's, yeah. you know, he's good for you. Not too good for you, Yeah, but have his support. It sounds like you have the support of mom and dad too. They just are, you know, outdated parents, which yeah, well, all parents yeah. are to some degree. But as an adult, that's the, the beauty of being an adult. We can teach our parents too. Like you just have to make sure you do it with like a, you know, parents want their respect from their kids. So you just got to do it in a respectful way. Stand your ground. And like anything else, if you stand your ground with parents, they usually, they might be resistant to it at first, but they'll, they'll come around. That's really good advice. And I really like the, the letter idea. That's definitely something that I'm going to do. Yeah, just try it. Maybe, and, and just do it at first with like, you're not even sure if you're going to send it. You're just going to write it, see how it goes, you know, see how it turns out, have your husband read it, get your thoughts, but try to be empathetic and understanding. Communicate that you're going to set some boundaries with her, but you're hopeful of healing and you're hopeful of rekindling what you once had and you are so sorry for what she's feeling and experiencing and see how it goes all right all right well i am sorry you're dealing with this and i'm sorry for your loss Thank because you. i know you lost people too and um yeah thank you for sharing thank your you. story though thank you for the time oh my pleasure I'll talk to you later all right take care bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at castmedia.com. Cast with a K. Serena Kerrigan joins us on Thursdays going deeper. Justin Glaze joins us on Freestyle Plus. A bunch of burning hot topics we will be sure to get into. Don't miss it. See you okay. on Wednesday. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps and Wednesday Celebrity and Expert Interviews. See you next time.